In our household, we spoke both. We were a franglais household. Grandi dans une classe où il y avait six Haïtiens, trois Italiens, deux filles grecques, une fille ukrainienne, quatre Libanais, puis quatre Québécois euh, francophones, mettons. Euh, puis j'ai toujours grandi comme ça, avec des accents. Moi, je dis tout le temps à tout le monde en joke, je dis « Yeah, I'm half English, but I'm also half black and half Italian. » Parce que j'ai grandi à moitié dans Rosemont puis à moitié dans Céléonard avec surtout des amis haïtiens et italiens. My father is uh, English. He was born in England, but he's uh, English-Canadian. And my mom is French-Canadian. And they decided to raise me in both languages. So their system, as I was an only child, was my mom spoke to me solely in French and my dad only in English. Both my families were very, very close, always pretty merged together. And so we weren't really aware of, like it wasn't a linguistic tension environment at all. Um, and when I went to school in elementary, it was sort of a non-issue because I went to college, like a college français where everything was just French. When I got to high school and CGEP, I became much more conscious of it. I grew up in Rosemont. I went to a very French high school, Collège Jean where my whole life happened in French. All my friends were French, but I, I had a very, very strong attachment to English popular culture. Around when I was 17, uh, right around the referendum, you start uh, and, and you're developing as an adult and you, you know, you're turning from a teenager to an adult. And I really remember that that became a much bigger issue in my life. Um, you know, linguistic divides. Uh, I had friends that were suddenly very much aware of the fact that uh, I was half Anglo and they would make me feel sort of weird about it. Then I had Anglo friends that were like, oh man, we made it to a Frenchy. Like I was always in the middle and I still don't know. I'm the French person to English people and I'm the Anglo to French people. Il y a quelque chose que je trouve vraiment, euh, c'est que en anglais, lorsque tu te sers du slang, tu as l'air cool. En français, quand tu te sers du slang ou du joual pour communiquer, tu as l'air mal éduqué. Et ça, c'est vraiment difficile dans les médias. Parce que à l'écrit, euh, l'anglais a évolué beaucoup plus rapidement vers quelque chose de très euh, euh, relax, de très cavalier, de très jeune, de très cool. Alors qu'en français, il faut que tu t'exprimes de façon correcte. Je suis super contente d'avoir été justement à l'école, bon, dans un collège très français, euh, dans mes années formatives. Mais en même temps, hein, lorsqu'après ça, je suis arrivée à Concordia, en communication puis en journalisme, là j'ai réalisé qu'il fallait que je transforme tout mon style d'écriture parce que j'écrivais de façon très formelle. Alors qu'en anglais, you gotta be cool, you gotta really have that sort of that swagger. Even in you know great journalistic publications like you read Esquire, or GQ or New York Times or whatnot, everybody is cool and um, la langue anglaise évolue super rapidement. La preuve, c'est qu'à chaque année, le dictionnaire Oxford rajoute des mots comme « bling » puis euh, <rire> tout ça euh, parmi son lexique. À Musique Plus, it was such a bonus to be completely bilingual because we always had to do simultaneous translation. Sometimes for two hours, if you had Becker, David Bowie, or whoever there, you had to be thinking in French for your viewers yet going back and saying, okay, this is what's going on without alienating the person you're interviewing. And that's really hard because you don't want them to think you're making fun of them when you're speaking in the other language. You want them to understand. You really want to communicate with your viewers that maybe don't speak French or English. It's, it was the live television thing because or else we would have just subtitled everything. For me, that was a great, great period in my life for work because it happened exactly like it happens in my brain. <laughs> you know, it was, it was the exact replica of my, uh, my linguistic schizophrenia. <laughs>